Hello. In this video, we're going to be talking about linear difference equations. So, uh, we're going to start out with a definition of a sequence. A sequence is just a function from the set of natural numbers into R. Remember, the set of natural numbers includes 0, and then 1, and then 2, etc. Okay. So, the way we normally describe a sequence, the notation that we use, looks like this. So, we have parentheses with a sub n in the middle, and then this uh, subscript down here, outside of the parentheses, is letting us know the range of n, va n values that we're using. By default, it will be the natural numbers, but sometimes we want to leave off some of the first few. So maybe we want to start our sequence at n equals 3, and we can uh, notate that here. In general, I will not be writing this subscript because pretty much all of our sequences will be starting at 0. So, uh, name of the sequence is a sub n, or a sub n with parentheses maybe. And then these are uh, the numbers in the sequence. In other words, this is um, what happens when you plug in 0 into this function. So a sub 0 is a real number, that's the output from plugging in the number 0. Okay, so the sequence maps n to a sub n. For each of these values n. Alright, so a very common sequence to start out with is the Fibonacci sequence, and this is normally described as f sub n, just for Fibonacci, and this is the sequence that starts out with 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, etc., and the way you get to the next term in the sequence is you take the previous two terms and add them together. Okay. So in order to get this 1 right here, you take 0 and 1, add them together to get this. This 2 comes from 1 plus 1, the 3 comes from 1 plus 2, etc. Okay, so we can describe that in a nice equation. f sub n, the nth term in the sequence, is the n minus first term, the previous term, plus the n minus second term, the term before that, added together. Okay, so the previous term plus the term before that is the new term. Okay. Now, in order to fully describe what this sequence is, we need a way to also get the first two terms in the sequence, otherwise we would have nothing to add together to get to them. So we also need to state that the first, the zeroth term, is zero, and the n equals one term is one. Okay. Uh, there are other sequences here, just for other examples. So this sequence, a sub n, again, we're starting out with n equals 0, so I'm not going to write the subscript. Uh, this is 1, 1, 2, 6, 24. In general, I'm just writing factorials here. This is 0 factorial, 1 factorial, 2 factorial, etc. And you can describe this sequence with this recurrence relation. Okay, So to get the next term in the sequence, you take the previous term and multiply by n. Okay, And we also need to describe the first term which is just 1. Okay, so similar situation going on here. We have another sequence described by this recurrence relation, which in order to get the next term, you multiply the previous two terms. And then again, we have to describe uh, the first two terms here. So here we only needed to say what the first term was, because there's only one term in the equation that allows you to get the next term. Whereas here, there are two terms describing the next term, which means we need two uh, initial conditions. Okay, so now the main definition. Uh, so what is a linear difference equation? So a linear difference equation is an equation that can be written in this format, a number times a sub n plus a number times a sub n minus 1 all the way up through uh, a number times a sub n minus k. And that is equal to some function of n. It doesn't really matter. Okay, uh, So all of those lambda i's have to be constants. I wrote uh, that they're real numbers here. They could also be complex if you're talking about complex sequences. Very similarly, we could replace this r here with the set of complex numbers. Everything would work out just fine. Okay, um, 
if the first term and the last term are not zero, in other words, the, the coefficients are not zero there, then we say that this linear difference equation has order k. All right, and finally, if f sub or f of n, if the equation on the other side, or sorry, if the expression on the other side of the equation is zero, just the zero function, then the linear difference equation, or LDE, is called homogeneous. So an example of a linear difference equation is this one right here. So f sub n is equal to f sub n minus 1 plus f sub n minus 2. Notice that if we just subtracted these two terms to the left-hand side, we would get f sub n minus f sub n minus 1 minus f sub n minus 2 equals 0. And that is in this form where lambda 0 is 1, lambda 1 is negative 1, lambda 2 is also negative 1, and k is equal to 2. Okay, so it's a linear difference equation of order 2, and it is also homogeneous because there's no extra term here. If we wanted to make it not homogeneous, we could have something like plus 3 over here, or maybe plus 3n, or some function of n which is not just a 0. That would be left on the right-hand side after we move all of these a sub whatever terms to the left. Okay. These other two recurrence relations, so a sub n is equal to this, and b sub n is equal to this, these are not linear difference equations uh, because, well here, we could move everything to the left, but the coefficient of a sub n minus 1 is n, which is not a constant. It's a function of n. So saying that lambda i must be a real number means that it can't involve an n. It can't depend on n. Okay. Uh, very similarly here, uh, you can't multiply two terms of the sequence together and still be linear. They all have to be added. We now have a couple of propositions I want to look at. So this first proposition says the set of all sequences is a vector space with these operations. So a sub n plus b sub n, if I want to add these two sequences together, I just add all of their individual terms together. So in other words, if I want to figure out the first term of the sum of these two sequences, I take the first term of the first sequence, add it to the first term of the second sequence, and that's my first term of the sum. Okay, scalar multiplication works very similarly. If I want to scale an entire sequence, I just scale each individual term of the sequence. Okay, and just to note, our zero vector here is just the sequence of all zeros. Okay, uh, one thing to note, whenever you're looking at a zero vector, the main property that it should have is that if you add it to a sequence, it shouldn't change the sequence. And if you add zero to each of the individual terms, you don't change any of the terms, so you get the same sequence back. I'm not going to go through the proof of this proposition. Again, it's that 10-item checklist at the beginning of section 4.1. And you can just believe me, or you can go through that checklist yourself. So uh, more importantly, the next proposition says that the set of sequences which satisfy a homogeneous linear difference equation is a vector space. Okay. And in case you're not clear on what it means to satisfy the equation, here's the definition of satisfying an equation. So we say this sequence satisfies this difference equation if whenever n is bigger than k, the equation holds. Okay. So if you want to plug in the first uh, k plus 1 terms into this, it should work. If you want to skip the first term and plug in the next k plus 1 terms into this, it should still work, etc. It always works no matter where you are, but you have to be at least at k in order for this to even make sense because n minus k has to be at least 0 for x sub n minus k to be a thing. Okay, so let's go through the proof of this. The proof is 
uh, is based off of the fact that we already know this is a vector space and this should be a subspace of that vector space. Okay, So it's clear that it's a subset uh, because all of the sequences which satisfy the equation are sequences. So it's a subset of the set of all sequences. So we're trying to show that it's a subspace uh, by checking those three things for, for a subspace to, that needs to, the three things that a subspace needs to satisfy. Okay, uh, so here I use the term solutions of the homogeneous linear difference equation. That's the same thing as the set of uh, sequences which satisfy. So solutions of can be replaced with sequences which satisfy. Okay, so uh, we're going to do the standard thing where we take two solutions and a constant so two solutions to this linear difference equation here, and it's hom homogeneous. Notice that this is the zero right there. Okay, And then we want to show that if we add them together and scale the second one, that it's still a solution. Okay, So xn plus t times yn is still a solution. What does it mean to be a solution? We need to check that for n bigger than or equal to k, this equation holds. Okay, So for every n bigger than or equal to k, we can do lambda naught times the nth term in the sequence plus lambda one times the n minus first term in the sequence all the way through to the n minus kth term in the sequence. And then we can just move some stuff around. Okay, so get rid of these parentheses and group all the x's together and then group all the y's together. All of the y terms will have this t times in front of them so we can factor that out. And what we're left with is exactly this right here for the x term, which because we're assuming that the sequence x of n is a solution to this, this must equal 0. Okay, And then we're adding on t times this, which must also equal 0 because yn is a solution. Okay, So we have 0 plus t times 0, and that's just 0. Therefore, this must also be a solution. Okay, so that's the first thing we need to check. Uh, so I said that there were three things to check for a, a subspace. I just checked the first two by doing that one thing. This is sort of a shortcut. But the third thing must be checked no matter what. We need to make sure that zero is a solution. So for zero to be a solution, remember zero is just the sequence of all zeros. And if we take the sequence of all zeros, and plug it in right here, and that's replacing each of these a sub whatevers by zero, then we just have zero plus zero plus zero plus zero, and that of course is always equal to zero. Okay, So this must also satisfy the equation. Notice that in order for that to work, we had to have a homogeneous linear difference equation. If there was something that was not zero over here, zero would not satisfy it, and therefore we would not get a vector space. Okay. So we know that the set of solutions to a homogeneous linear difference equation must be a vector space. Thank you for watching.